Welcome back to Kill Bone 5, Keith. Okay, so today we're going to go over the uh, fixing of an RV furnace. Right now here what we have in front of us is an Atwood 8531 4. So uh, we're going to go over a bit of the sequence of events and the components within, within the, uh, the furnace itself. So today we're going to go over the, in this video, the components and what they do and that and then in another video we're going to get into the sequence of events and diagnosing off of those sequences and then in another video we'll go into how to fix each of those particular symptoms as you find them so we'll, uh, we'll jump right into the into the components so within your furnace you have your main control board you have your switch Underneath this shroud right here, in the center here, this is your blower, your blower wheel for your cabin air and also your combustion wheel in there. There is the gas valve. This lead here leads to the igniter, which is tucked up back in there, up in with the gas burner and that. Tucked in behind in, in this shroud itself, on, on behind these two little dimples here is a sail switch and then in behind that attached to these wires here on these atwoods is a high limit switch so in amongst so over here we have a couple of examples of those right now all set up to test so right here we have a high limit switch here we have a sail switch that's what's in behind here those are part of the proving circuit within the furnace itself so when it comes down to the to the furnace and that, we'll uh, we'll get into the testing of this here. Sail switch. So on your voltmeter, if uh, if you guys don't already know, take and turn your voltmeter up here to ohms, and then this right here allows you to be audible, so that it'll actually beep at you. So you're, when you're checking the sail switch, you're gonna connect to each terminal. This switch is normally open, so you're not gonna hear anything until you, until you close the circuit. That indicates a good switch. Okay, so if you've tested that, and then that takes care of that, so you can eliminate that from your, from the issues. Okay, then you're gonna come over here, you're gonna to come to this high limit switch, and if you're testing it on the Atwoods, it's way at the back. So of course, testing it, you have to do, you have to either cut the wires, or have these little pokies that can penetrate the wire to the insulation on the wire to test it. But in our case here, we're just gonna make it easy. So this one right here being a normally closed switch, as soon as we plug in, okay, we're good. So that's a good limit switch. Okay, then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna come to our our on off switch on on the furnace now on these atwoods they have what they call it's a breaker switch as well as an on off switch so you'll be pushing it up here it's rated for 10 amps before you go checking anything or calling anybody this might be a good place for you to even start is turn it off and click it back on it's not going to be in an easy spot for you to get to it never is so you have to go in there you find this switch and you cycle and that might solve your issue right there so you have the power that comes in, your main power line coming in off of here, comes into the switch and then comes back out, which then supplies power down to the board here. And then off the other blue line that's piggybacked off of that, that comes down to this line right here. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. sends it back down into the line and provides power down to the to the proving circuit and allows it to come through 